The long-term existence of many companies most often is placed in jeopardy when some aspects of their activities go out of control. Consider the following examples. A news report indicated that the fire which destroyed the 800 million luxury ship was caused by illegal connections made in its electrical system. If this is true, the losses could be attributed to inadequate management control. Another example is the tragedy that happened at an entertainment venue in Makati City clearly manifested management's lack of control over the day-to-day -day operations of the firm. Even the failure to detect earlier the viol violations in the building code spells lack of effective management control. Third example, the management of an electric company could not stop unauthorized connections in its system leading to huge loss. The consumers became angry when they are billed for these losses. The examples presented constitute a very small percentage of unwanted occurrences that happen every day in the business world. Apart from the destruction of lives and property, normal business operations are hampered causing discontinuities in employment and the provision of products and services. This could not have happened if only adequate controls were instituted. What is controlling? Controlling refers to the process of ascertaining whether organizational objectives have been achieved. If not, then why not? And determining what activities could then be taken to achieve objectives better in the future. Controlling completes the cycle of management functions. Objectives and goals that are set at the planning stage are verified as to achievement or completion at any given point in the organizing and implementing stages. When expectations are not met, corrective measures are usually undertaken. For this week's lesson, the following topics will be discussed. Importance of controlling, steps in the control process, components of organizational control systems, and identifying control problems. Importance of controlling. When controlling is properly implemented, it will help the organization achieve its goals in the most efficient and effective manner possible. Deviations, mistakes, and shortcomings happen inevitably. When they occur in the daily operations, they contribute to unnecessary expenditures which increase the cost of producing goods and services. Proper control measures minimizes the ill effects of such negative occurrences. An effective inventory control, for instance, minimizes if not totally eliminates losses in inventory. The importance of controlling may be illustrated as it is applied in a typical factory. If the required standards daily output of, for individual workers is 100 pieces, all workers who do not produce the requirement are given sufficient time to improve. If no improvements are forthcoming, they are asked to resign. This action will help the company keep its overhead and other costs at expected levels. If no such control is made, the company will be faced with escalating production costs which will place the viability of the firm in jeopardy. Steps in the control process The control process consists of four steps, namely establishing performance objectives and standards, measuring actual performance, comparing actual performance to objectives and standards, and taking necessary action based on results of the comparison. Establishing performance objectives and standards in controlling, what has to be achieved must first be determined. Examples of objectives and standards are the following. Sales targets, which are expressed in quantity or monetary terms. Production targets, could be expressed in quantity or quality. Worker attendance, which are expressed in terms of rate of absences. Safety record, which is expressed in number of accidents for given periods. And supplies use, which are expressed in quantity or monetary terms for given periods. Once these objectives and standards are established, the measurement of performance will be facilitated. 
Standards differ among various organizations. In construction firms, project completion dates are useful standards. In chemical manufacturing firms, certain pollution measures form the basis for standard requirements. After the performance objectives and standards are established, the methods for measuring performance must be designed. Every standard established must be provided with its own method for measurement. There is a need to measure actual performance so that when shortcomings occur, adjustments could be made. The adjustments will depend on the actual findings. The measuring tools will differ from organization to organization as each have their own unique objectives. Some firms, for instance, will use annual growth rate as a standard basis, while other firms will use some other tools like market share approach and position in the industry. Once actual performance has been determined, this will be compared with the organization seeks to achieve. Actual production output, for instance, will be compared with the target output. This may be illustrated as follows. A construction firm entered into a contract with the government to construct a 100-kilometer road within 10 months. It would be then reasonable for management to expect that at least 10 kilometers to be constructed every month. As such, this must be verified every month or, if possible, every week. The purpose of comparing actual performance with the desired result is to provide management with the opportunity to take corrective action when necessary. If in the illustration cited in the previous slide, the management of the construction firm found out that only 15 kilometers were finished after two months, then any of the following actions may be undertaken. Number one, hire additional personnel. Number two, use more equipment or number three, require overtime. Control consists of three distinct types, namely feed-forward control, concurrent control, and feedback control. The diagram shows the types of controls and their relation to operations. When management anticipates problems and prevents their occurrence, the type of control measure undertaken is called feed-forward control. This type of control provides the assurance that the required human and non-human resources are in place before operations begin. Example, the manager of a chemical manufacturing firm makes sure that the best people are selected and hired to fill jobs. Materials required in the production process are carefully checked to detect defects. The foregoing control measures are designed to prevent wasting valuable resources. If these measures are not undertaken, the likelihood that problems will occur is always present. When operations are already ongoing and activities to detect variances are made, concurrent control is said to be undertaken. It is always possible that deviations from standards will happen in the production process. When such deviations occur, Adjustments are made to ensure compliance with requirements. Information on the adjustments are also necessary inputs in the pre-operation phase. Examples of activities using concurrent control are the following. The managers of construction firm constantly monitors the progress of the company's projects. When construction is behind schedule, corrective measures like the hiring of additional manpower are made. In a firm engaged in production and distribution of water, the chemical composition of the water procured from various sources is checked thoroughly before they are distributed to the consumers. The production manager of an electronics manufacturing firm inspects regularly the outputs consisting of various electronics products coming out of the production line. When information is gathered about completed activity, and in order that evaluation and steps for improvements are derived, feedback control is undertaken. Corrective actions aimed at improving future activities are features of feedback control. Feedback control validates objectives and standards. 
If accomplishments consist only of a percentage of standard requirements, the standard may be too high or inappropriate. An example of feedback control is the supervisor who discovers that continuous overtime work for factory workers lowers the quality of output. The feedback information obtained leads to some adjustments in the overtime schedule. Components of Organizational Control Systems Organizational control systems consist of the following Strategic Plan the long-range financial plan, the operating budget, performance appraisals, statistical reports, and policies and procedures. A strategic plan, as discussed in our previous lessons, provides the basic control mechanism for the organization. When there are indications that activities do not facilitate the accomplishment of strategic goals, these activities are either set aside, modified, or expanded. These corrective measures are made possible with the adoption of strategic plans. The planning horizon differs from company to company. Most firms will be satisfied with one year. Engineering firms, however, will require longer-term financial plans. This is because of the long lead times needed for capital projects. An example is the engineering firm assigned to construct the light rail transit within three years. As such, the three-year financial plan will be very useful. As presented in our previous uh, lessons, the financial plan recommends a direction for financial activities. If the goal does not appear to be where the firm is headed, the control mechanism should be made to work. An operating budget indicates the expenditures, revenues, or profits planned for some future period regarding operations. The figures appearing in the budget are used as standard measurements for performance. Performance appraisal measures employee performance. As such, it provides employees with a guide on how to do their jobs better in the future. Performance appraisals also function as effective checks on new policies and programs. For example, if a new equipment has been acquired for the use of an employee, it would be useful to find out if it had a positive effect on his performance. Statistical reports pertain to those that contain data on various developments within the firm. Among the information which may be found in a statistical report pertains to the following labor efficiency rates, quality control rejects, accounts receivable, accounts payable, sales reports, accident reports, power consumption reports. Policies refer to the framework within which the objectives must be pursued. An example of a policy is whenever two or more activities compete for the company's resources, the client takes priority. A procedure is a plan that describes the exact series of actions to be taken in a given situation. An example of a procedure is the procedure in the purchase of equipment. So for example, the steps are number one, the concerned manager forwards a request for purchase to the purchasing officer. Then the purchasing officer forwards the request to top management for approval. And then when approved, the purchasing officer makes a canvas of the requested item. If it's approved, the purchasing officer returns the form to the requesting manager. And then the purchasing officer negotiates with the low, lowest complying bidder. Identifying control problems. Recognizing the need for control is one thing, actually implementing it is another. When operations become complex, the engineer manager must consider useful steps in controlling. Kreitner mentions three approaches. Number one, executive reality check. Number two, comprehensive internal audit. And number three, general checklist of symptoms of inadequate control.
Employees at the front line often complain that management imposes certain requirements that are not realistic. In a certain state college, for example, requests for purchase of classroom materials and supplies take last priority. This is irregular because requests of such kind must be the highest priority considering that the organization is an educational institution. Ironically, because certain officers of the non-academic staff have direct access to the president, their purchase requests always, almost always get the top priority. Later on, when the president made an inspirational speech on quality teaching, many members of the faculty just shrug their shoulders and listen passively. One school in Central Luzon provides a good example on how executive reality check may be exercised. It requires its executives to handle at least one subject load each. What the executives will experience in the classroom will make him more responsive in the preparation of plans and control tools. The engineer manager of a construction firm could once in a while perform the work of one of his laborers. In doing so, he will be able to see things that he never see inside the confines of his air-conditioned office. Because the said action exp exposes the manager to certain realities, the term executive reality check is very appropriate. An internal audit is one undertaken to determine the efficiency and effectivity of the activities of an organization. Among the many aspects of operations within the organization, a small activity that is not done right may continue to be unnoticed until it snowballs into a full-blown problem. An example is the resignation of an employee after serving the company for 15 years. After one week, another employee with 10 years of service also resigned. Both were from the same department. If after another week a third employee is resigning, a full investigation is in order. Even if the source of the problem is identified, it may already have caused considerable losses to the organization. A comprehensive internal audit aims to detect dysfunctions in the organization before they bring bigger troubles to management. If a comprehensive internal audit cannot be availed of for some reason, the use of checklists for symptoms of inadequate control may be used. The following are the common symptoms. An unexplained decline in revenues and profits. A degradation of service, which is determined by the number of customer complaints. Employee dissatisfaction based on the number of complaints, grievances, or turnover, cash shortages caused by bloated inventories or delinquent accounts receivable, idle facilities or personnel, disorganized operations, workflow bottlenecks, excessive paperwork, excessive costs, evidence of waste and inefficiency, such as scrap or rework. It must be noted that behind every symptom is a problem waiting to be solved. Unless this problem is clearly identified, no effective solution may be derived. Nevertheless, the problems are easily recognized if adequate control measures are in place. Controlling is one of the main functions of management. It comes after planning, organizing, and directing. Controlling is aimed at determining whether objectives were realized or not, and if not, by providing means for achievement. Control is important because it complements the other management functions.